What up on the rise? I'm here today to talk to you about my seven biggest coaching pet peeves that I see out on the court that really make me mad. So listen, if you're part of the program and you're watching this, make sure you try to avoid these common mistakes. Hey, before we get too far in this video, I just want you to remember that this is all kind of meant to be a little lighthearted. Don't take it serious if you've done any of these because every tennis player has done all these different things at some time because you don't really realize it's wasting time until like you see it or you have someone else tell you. So remember, I'm not really mad at anyone. If you know me, I barely ever get mad. So. Just keep that in mind as we go through these. Also, big shout out to our 87 YouTube subscribers. We thank you so much. If you're watching right now and you don't hit that subscribe button, Willow's gonna be a very unhappy puppy. We're gonna start out today going in order from the least annoying all the way up to the most annoying. So stay tuned to the very end to see what really makes me the most mad when I'm at drills. All these things really just annoy me the most just because they're not helping you you become a better tennis player and it's just kind of either like wasting time or doesn't make sense or even a couple are helping to avoid injury or a potential injury right because if you get injured you can't stay on the court number one is not clearing balls when you are up at the net okay i see it all the time someone a kid comes in there's balls all over the place and they try to hit that ball and they, they, they like almost can't even move their feet because there's balls all over the place. Like if they take a step to the left, they're going to roll an ankle. If they take a step to the right, they're going to roll an ankle. So not only do they not even get to practice their volley, they're like trying just not to roll an ankle up at the net. The second most annoying thing is missing the warm up on purpose. And you know who you are. I see all sorts of kids like I don't, I mean, they show up late. They come in, they start like re-gripping their racket or they're tying their shoe or they're doing whatever that should have been done either in the car right over there or that should have been done after drills the day before, right? Hey, it's important that you want to warm up, right? Because especially right here in these Minnesota winters where it's been negative, right? You don't want to come in right out of the car, right to hitting. That's kind of tough on the body, right? It's just common sense. Third most annoying thing is not picking up balls at all. I see this one all the time and it drives me nuts. Um, it's like player, here's a player on one side of the net, they're running up, they're grabbing the balls that, you know, cause they, like both players are out of balls, while you go to the other side of the net and the dude over there is just fat chilling, spinning the racket, maybe throwing a stick of gum in. I mean, who knows? They're just like, don't, like, it's like, you don't have any balls, what are you gonna hit with, man? Like, come on. Like if your partner's picking up balls, you should be picking up balls. That way you're saving time and hitting more tennis balls out there on the court. Ooh, the fourth one. Now we're really starting to get up in some ones that really can make me mad is giving bad feeds on purpose in baseline games, right? I mean, I see this all the time. It's like, oh, gonna feed it super high up to their backhand because everybody knows high backhands are really tough for a lot of players. So they're throwing the feet up really high and the kid's gonna either miss it off the feet or they're gonna leave it short so you can you have a nice easy approach shot to win the point on, right? Hey, that's not helping anyone get better, right? Because you can't serve it up high to their backhand, so why are you gonna feed it up high to their backhand and start points, right? The purpose of playing baseline games is to improve your game. I also see the other one where they're feeding like kind of short balls off to the side so people barely get to them, float them up, and then they got a winner to the open court, right? These things don't help you get better, guys. The fifth one, right? It doesn't happen too often anymore, but when it does, I, I go I go bonkers, man. Is when a kid shows up to tennis in something that doesn't have pockets, right? Am I supposed to feed all four courts at the same time? What if everyone showed up with no pockets? We wouldn't be hitting a lot of balls that day, right? It's just so important. You've got to have pockets when you're playing tennis. Your tennis players, we have pockets or we have a way to store balls so we can like, you know, when you miss, you have a new, so you can grab a new ball to feed, okay? The sixth one. To me, this one's just plain silly, unless maybe you're doing it for a specific purpose, right? Then I can kind of understand, but for the most part, I think it's just hilarious when I see it happening, right? Is hitting 
winners off the feed. As you see in this clip, and I see it quite a bit, maybe not to this extent, because Toby's hitting them pretty hard, but it's like a feed up the middle, boom, first ball to a corner. Feed up the middle, boom, next ball to a corner. And then Toby over there is up 2-0, while me, I'm down 0-2. But and realistically, I have fed two balls, and Toby's hit two forehands for winners. That's not really helping either of us get better. Okay, it, it's, it's totally different once you're starting to serve or you're like a little more in the point because as players, we should be able to anticipate a little bit where the ball is going. But off of a feed up the middle of the court, like you have no idea. So it just, it doesn't make sense. And the final one, this one really makes me mad. I actually like kind of banned it at our program because I was just going, I was just going crazy from it, is spinning the racket when the when not like when you're playing up and down the river and you spin the racket rather than playing on an extra point when you're both tied. So it's like if I'm four at four, my opponent's at four, and it's and the coach yells rotate. Rather than playing one more point, we go up and we go, hey, you want a mountain or valley? Hey, you want up or down? And that determines who wins and who loses. It that doesn't make sense. Tennis is all about pressure. And right when it's tied in a baseline game, that's a great time to learn how to deal with some pressure. Hey, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Remember, I think these things really just make me mad because they're not helping you get better as a player. And I'm sure there's some things that maybe you've never thought of and maybe you didn't realize you were doing, but now you know, and these are things you can help avoid to help your game get better.